So we've talked already about how Python provides uh, scripting language type uh, interaction capability. Uh, and, and that works great as long as we're doing very simple, quick kinds of things. But over time, as we start to develop more complicated procedures that we want to be able to reuse, it becomes really important for us to take those procedures and push them uh, out of interactive mode and into more formal kinds of structures. The first of those is functions we'll talk about now, and, and then we'll also give an example about uh, class uh, definitions here in a moment. So, so functions, as, as you know from your programming background, are all about uh, producing uh, pieces of code that are going to be reusable in lots of different contexts. Th these are also important mechanisms for us to, uh, to use in order to organize our code. Uh, into manageable units. So uh, writing very long code that doesn't fit on uh, a, a page on your screen, uh, that starts to get a little bit overwhelming as far as keeping your head around uh, the code that's there. And so starting to chop that code up into uh, smaller pieces that you can look at uh, as one uh, at one time uh, is, is really uh, good from a coding uh, practices perspective. Uh, in Jupyter, uh, we define functions within uh, individual cells. Once you define the function, in order for it to be available in the Python environment, uh, you actually must execute that, that cell. So, so that execution process actually pushes the function out uh, to the, the Python kernel. Okay, so let's do uh, some examples here. So let's go ahead and define uh, a function off the bat. Let's just build a function that's going to take as input uh, some uh, list of things and uh, print out the individual values. So we already know how to handle that uh, mechanically, but now let's do this in the context of a function. So the, the keyword here is def, uh, and our function name is going to be display, and it takes as input uh, one uh, argument or parameter. And notice the, the colon here, and that, that means that we have a new block of code coming that is indented. And all of the code, subsequent code that's indented by this, this level here, this one level, uh, will be part of the function definition. So we'll iterate over our values and print out uh, the individual values. So there's our uh, function definition here. Notice that once we introduce the four inside of the def, that we had two levels of of, of indentation, and that and that's fine. The print belongs with the four, and then the four is with inside the def. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute that. And by executing it, we're pushing that out into the Python environment, and now we can use this function. So let's give it a uh, sequence of strings and execute that. And there we go, we get our list of uh, individual items here. What's cool about this display function is that we can hand it a list of anything. So there's a, a list of three integers, we'll execute that. And we get our one, two, three. And just for fun, let's uh, let's hand it an iterator and see how it handles that. So range generates an iterator that takes us from one inclusive to five exclusive. And then uh, our particular display function prints out the individual items uh, in th that are produced by that iterator. Okay, so one of the nice things about uh, Python uh, functions is that we can provide, of course, multiple parameters, but not all parameters have to be required. So let's define a new uh, display function, display2, that takes a set of values, um, but let's imagine having a, uh, a prefix to all of our values. So we'll print prefix and then 
uh, and a value and then go on to the next value, prefix value, etc. But we can provide a, uh, a default value for this parameter. So what, what we mean by this is that uh, when we call display2, uh, only the parameters that are that don't have values associated with them by default have to be provided, but you can override the, the, the value that's provided. So, so let's go ahead and write this out. Be in values. Okay. So, so we're going to walk down the, the the list of values, and for each one, we'll print the, the prefix and then whatever uh, the, the associated value is. So let me execute that. We'll push that out into the Python environment. And now let's execute uh, execute this function. And there we go. So now we have pound foo, pound bar, pound bass. Now, uh, suppose we, we don't want the pound as the prefix, uh, but instead we want something else. So pre uh, equals, let's give three dashes for fun. Um, in, in Python, a, a standard programming practice thing to do is to not include spaces uh, around the equal sign. So when we execute this, instead of getting our default value for our prefix, now we, we're setting a new value. So foo, foo bar and baz. Um, with, so we get foo bar and baz with the uh, dashes as the prefix. What's also cool about functions is that uh, the parameters, when you actually use the names, when you're handing values for, to the parameters, the order of the parameters doesn't matter. So let's let's do another example here, um, where we say pre uh, equals. I don't know, we'll do carrots, and uh, for values we might might give it one, two, three. So so here we we've provided each of the parameters, so values and pre, but notice that the order has swapped from our definition here. So if we execute this, then we get, as, as we expect, caret, caret one, two, and three. So this turns out to be a really powerful uh, tool as we move uh, forward, or we're defining really complicated uh, functions that might have many uh, parameters associated with them. Let's do another example here. So I'm going to give you values post and pre. We'll still have a, a default pre fix, but the post fix that's provided does not have a default value. So that means that uh, display three must have that uh, particular value associated with it. Plus, plus post. Okay. Push that out into the environment. And, and now if we try to execute, um, try to execute display three here with just an array. So we'll hand it five, six, and seven. Execute that. Python is going to complain because no value has been specified for post. So let's do. Let's provide a value for it. We'll use a, a plus for our postfix. Execute that, and and now uh, the default value is being used for our prefix. Uh, but the postfix corresponds to what we specified here. And, and of course we can, uh, we, we can pause there. 
of course, we can provide uh, the parameters in any sequence that we'd like. Three, uh, we can say pre is dollar dollar. Our values are uh, some sequence of values and our post is, uh, we'll give it a string of, of exclamation points. And there we go, there's dollar dollar, first value, and then exclamation points. Likewise for the second value. Okay, so now let's talk about global variables. There's an example of using Markdown just to kind of give us some bracketing in our code here. Um, variable scope is, is handled in uh, Python in uh, a lazy fashion. So it, it Python figures out on the fly during at runtime which variables are being referred to. So if I, so let's, let's create a, a new function Display four that takes, it looks a lot like display two. So it takes a set of values and it takes our prefix. Okay, so so this particular function takes just values and, and the prefix, and you'll notice that inside the function, we're referencing another variable here that isn't defined within the function and it's not handed as a parameter. Python is happy to accept that, uh, except I have to spell def right. Python is, is happy to accept that. Uh, it will only try to resolve this variable uh, at runtime. So if I now say, let's declare that global variable and then execute display four, so I'll execute that and, and there we go. So here we're defining the value for the global variable and then at the time that we call display four, that global variable is, is available and uh, usable by uh, by our function. Okay, so let's also, let me declare one more uh, function here. So we're going to de declare a slightly different version of this. Actually, if in the interest of time, let's just copy that. But the, the key difference here is that we're going to create, we're going to set a value for post. So, so now we're in a situation where we have both a locally defined variable, so local to the, the function itself, but we also have the globally defined variable that we, that we set up here. And a, and a good question is if we were to then execute display five, which one of these two values that we end up with? And, and the answer is the, the default thing that uh, Python is, is going to reach for is that locally scoped variable. So you'll notice that, uh, that the uh, ampersand is, is used uh, as we set within the, the display five function. Now notice that if I ask what ask Python what post is, then this global value here hasn't changed at all. So, so, so this variable here is distinct from this variable declaration right here. So what Python has done in this declaration here of display five is that it has assumed that because you're setting a variable inside of the function, uh, it's, it's making an assumption that uh, this is a locally uh, defined variable. There are scenarios, however, where we want to explicitly force Python to reference the globally defined variable. And let's, uh, let's implement that. We'll just define this in terms of a new function. 
oops, call it display six. And, and what we do is we add one more line here uh, using the global keyword that says, assume that the post variable is a global variable. And then we'll set the value and then we'll make use of it. Okay, so we'll push that out to the Python environment. And let's, uh, let's first print post and then we'll display some sequence of strings and then we'll print post again. So remember that post here is globally defined and it was set up here. So it's the, uh, it, it's uh, this sequence of characters here. We call display six with this string and then we're going to ask what happens to the global variable here. So let's execute that and there we go. So the post is originally uh, this string here. Within the function, post gets reset to be, uh, to, to be this pair of characters here and that gets used throughout the function and then notice that outside of the function, uh, the post global variable has changed its value. So, so, so I've given you some examples here of, of functions in general, but how variable scoping works uh, inside of functions, so local variables versus global variables. Python is very happy to have you actually uh, reference uh, global variables inside of your functions. In general though, it especially as your code starts to get more complicated, it becomes harder for you to track which variables are local and which ones are global. And, and so as, as part of good programming practice in Python, uh, the use of global variables is actually something that we're going to shy away from. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a moment.